Welcome to part two of my series covering the 30th anniversary of the African Burial Grounds discovery in Lower Manhattan. In part one, I explored the national monument built on this sacred ground and provided some historical and cultural information with a sampling of music to honor the ancestors. In this episode, we have a very special guest, celebrated architect Rodney Leon, who was the actual designer of the African Burial Ground Memorial. I met Mr. Leon as a part of the anniversary celebrations, and in this episode, he explains the seven elements of the memorial in his own words, sharing with us the thought process around what he designed here. I'm very pleased and honored to welcome Mr. Leon to Black in the Core. The memorial that we're at the center of right now is uh, called the Ancestral Libation Chamber. And this memorial is meant to commemorate the African Burial Ground National Monument and the people that are buried here that uh, died. And this particular 18th century burial ground was rediscovered 30 years ago in October during the construction of the Federal Office Tower adjacent to this site. So we designed this uh, memorial with seven elements in mind to talk about, in different ways, the people that were buried here, the significance of the site's spiritual uh, and emotional significance to the ancestors that are buried here and to the people who are the descendants of those ancestors, and to also communicate and educate that to the rest of the world community who comes to visit the site. So the seven elements include uh, a mound, a series of seven mounds, that mark the location of the reinterments of the remains that were uncovered on this site. And that is called the Ancestral Reinterment Zone. Mm -hmm. And that Ancestral Reinterment Zone is the first element that you walk upon when you enter into the site that not just uh, encompasses the seven mounds, but also the trees and that are uh, overseen as ancestral trees mounds as well. The second element is the, what you see is the wall facing Duane Street. And that element is known as the Wall of Remembrance. And on that Wall of Remembrance is prominently featured the Sankofa symbol, which is a heart-shaped symbol that comes from the Adinkra people of West Africa in the area of Ghana and the Ivory Coast. And that Sankofa symbol means to look back to the past and take them what you can from the past and learn from it in order to move forward into the future. So this idea, this concept of learning from the past and taking your history from the past that has been lost and retrieving that is a very powerful and important aspect that describes what we're trying to do here at the site. To really reclaim what was lost, what was stolen, and taking that with us so that we can move forward and heal into the future. On that same set wall, that same element are the words for all those who were lost, for all those who were stolen, for all those who were left behind, and for all those who were not forgotten. And in our minds, we say that as a libation phrase, an acknowledgement of the ancestors, an acknowledgement of the people that were buried here so that we do not ever forget and we continue to uh, say their names, even if we don't know them literally, but to begin to claim that history, to claim that past, and then move forward into the future. The third element that we have in the memorial site as well is the memorial wall, which is a map that describes the scale and scope of the, the burial ground. Many people don't know that this 18th century burial ground is actually about four and a half acres large. It extends all the way from Broadway past Wayne Street, the memorial site, all the way into Foley Square to the, e to the east, and then extends back towards City Hall and Chambers Street to the south. So that site is much more expansive, and most of the buildings around the memorial itself are sitting on the historical 18th century burial ground. So that memorial wall shook, and that map on that memorial wall really starts to give you a sense of how significantly large the site is. And within that historic cemetery, they're estimated to be about 15,000 burials, perhaps more. So that third element is meant to describe that. The fourth element is this ancestral chamber, mm -hmm. which is this pyramidal uh, ship-like vessel that you pass through in order to go from the upper level into the lower level port. And that element is meant to acknowledge the significance of the middle passage and the experience of people that died during that middle passage to come uh, Western Hemisphere during that period of our tra tragic period of our history. One passes through the ancestral chamber through what we call the door of return, 
And that door of return is inspired by the door of no return from Gory Island in Senegal, where people were taken never to return. So we created this door of return as a counterpoint to that, as an opportunity for us to think about how one might be able to heal and learn from that tragic past, and then return to a place which is much more whole, and to, as in Sankofa, and that spirit of Sankofa, go back and to reclaim what was lost, what was stolen, and to help to heal ourselves moving forward into the future. So when you pass through that fourth element, you then come into a space which we are in a circular court. And that circular court is encircled by a series of, of symbols. And those symbols that we call the circle of the diaspora represent all the different types of cultural and spiritual, spiritual traditions of people of African descent from different parts of the world, from Africa, from the Caribbean, from Central and South America, and from other places that describe human characteristics that allow people to get through struggle, uh, it, it describes the idea of transition from uh, physical space to sacred space and also starts to describe ideas around God, spirituality, and religion. And it shows a kind of disparate transformation but also the commonality of Latin spiritual symbols from Africa that have been transformed over time uh, since the, the Middle Passage occurred and over time throughout the parts of the Western Hemisphere. Uh, people of African descent taking those spiritual traditions and then creating their own culture and traditions around that historic uh, commonality. So that circle of diaspora in that that encircles us also is indicative of a movement of a spiral that one comes into the court around. And you'll see on the center of this court in the spiral pattern we call the sixth element, which is the spiral procession random descriptions engraved into the court of the people that died and were buried here. So we don't know necessarily the, the details around their personal lives or their names, but we do know from archaeological excavations of the, the general gender or sex of the people that died and were, were uncovered here. We have a sense of like how old they were, and we also have a number that identifies those people. So we felt that it was important to create an opportunity for you to get a sense of the, the, who was buried here, and what you can find and learn from that is that many people that were buried here died at a very early age. A good, uh, I would say, majority of the people that died were very young. And that's indicative of the struggle and of the, the hard life that the people actually experienced. And that did not allow them to actually live to uh, a decent age. So there are many, many uh, descriptions of children that were also enslaved that died here at an early age. That are inscribed into the ground of this court. And then the last or seventh element is the actual court itself, which is called the Libation Court, which is a map that has Africa and the Central West Africa at its center. And the radial patterns of that court are indicative of the idea of the dispersal of African culture throughout the world. So you'll see not only the map of Africa, but you'll see how that energy has transformed the world, whether it's in South America or Europe or Central America or the Caribbean. That place at the center of the court is a place for us to kind of gather for education, for reflection, and for commemoration, for people to gather in honor of those ancestors that were there here at the African Bureau of Center. Heartfelt thanks to Rodney Leon for such a thorough explanation of the memorial he designed for all of us. What do you think about the African Burial Ground National Monument? Be a part of the conversation. Share your opinion in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my channel for future videos on New York City and hit the notification bell to receive more updates. Thanks for watching my video. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I'll be posting more videos on life in New York City.